This is the year that Fink beats the stomach. <laughs> Welcome to Fink Pizza Stomach, our bi-weekly take on the world of competitive eating. I am Mike Sullivan. And I'm James Bondori. Episode number 94. Great year. Hell of a year. That's, we've... Is this 94 or 95? I'm pretty sure it's 94. Oh, great, because I feel like we did this 94 bit. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> I was looking Jack ahead in 94. <laughs> For all the people who graduated four years after us from high school, big shouts. Oh. Big year. It was a big year. Rangers won the Stanley Cup. Did they in 94? 94. Um, Mark Messier. Mark Messier. There we go. Whoa. Oh. Who is that? Is that the competitive eating gods? I think it's like one of the goddesses of competitive That's eating, actually. Correct. Um, also, OJ and the Bronco is a great 30 for 30. Oh, absolutely. About June 14th, 1994. A huge day for sports. Um, the, I believe the Knicks were also making their way to the finals that year. Um, anywho, 1994, great year. Um, 94th episode who knows who knows we'll we'll, we'll see but I, I I think that we're gonna start off really on a, a high note here because we have two hours for this episode no that, yeah, you heard it here that. first folks we got two <laughs> um, hours a great content. we have unlimited time because all bets are off when the guest that we have this evening joins Fink Pizza Stomach she's someone that any fan of not only Fink Pizza Stomach but competitive eating in general has to know this person, like we said, one of the goddesses of the world of, of competitive oh. eating. Um, she is also the co-founder of Gal Pal Sports on Twitter. I hope you guys uh, are following following Gal Pal Sports. And, of course, someone who we know and love is one of the, the Fink cousins. Uh, great supporter of the show and one of our good friends. We want to welcome back to Fink Pizza Stomach, Leslie Ryder. Leslie, welcome back to Fink Pizza Stomach. You're here. <laughs> As as the lower third says, you're here, Leslie Ryder at it's Ryder me. Really. <laughs> How are you doing, Leslie? Uh, doing pretty good. Doing and pretty it, good. And a cheers at the at the Fink glasses to all the cousins all the way around. Cheers, cheers, cheers. And all bourbons to you. And Sweet. as on, on on the Fink cousin front, I got a specific request from my cousin and friend Cooper Cords. If you are listening slash watching, we love you. Thank you for being a fan. He asked when we were going to record. Wow. I said I'd let him know. So, buddy, if you're listening and you're watching, thanks. We appreciate the support. Uh, and uh, I believe him to be a Fink cousin as well. Absolutely. Well, like, literally. Literally. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> At this point, uh, you know, number one fan. And uh, so excited to have, have him added. And so excited to have Leslie Ryder on, who we got to see, luckily, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that. Whose, whose video size keeps changing, which is clearly going to be a bit throughout the yeah. entirety of this. I'll say I, just, I just keep trying to cover it, James. That's just kind of my thing today. I think show. that that's a way better idea to have more Leslie than me <laughs> on this show. But Leslie, um, in you know regular Fink fashion, how you doing? Uh, you know, doing pretty good. It was a pretty, 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 pretty good weekend out here. It was, it was really nice to have you guys uh, finally come out. Uh, I think we have this ongoing thing every year where sometime in the spring I'll text you guys you got to come to gyoza and then uh Mikey will be like oh I really want to and then you guys don't do it and then this year <laughs> he finally did it that sounds about right yeah. and it was great it was absolutely amazing it really was amazing um and I guess I feel like we we probably announced uh a while back that we were planning on going because we we booked these tickets in the spring, it was like March or April. James and I, we were talking. We we're like, we have to go. This has to be the year because, as you as you correctly say, Leslie, every year I feel like we do this little dance. Like, maybe we're gonna go. Ah, uh, no, we can't because right. there's always some sort of excuse. Like, obviously, right. we want to go. Or thinking about, or thinking about like taking a couple days off of work and flying yeah, across the entire it's country. Right yeah, after, yeah, it's yeah. pretty close after the fort. You know, whatever. Excuse, excuse, excuse. Bachelor parties, whatever. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Mike had to get married. There was this whole marriage thing Ugh. I had going on two years ago. Oh, gross. So I was super excited to be able to go. Um, As was I. And especially we got to stay with the amazing uh, Mike Shillstone, who, of course... Uh, Friend of the show. Friend of the show and his lovely Fabulous. wife, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor and Mike, um, for sure not listening because they um, have, smart. You know, have way better things to do. And I found out, listen to The Daily every morning uh, on the all ride to work. Um, I, don't, I don't think that Fink Pizza Summit is going to crack that, um, that uh, podcast lineup. But, um, you know, so nice to be around friends, um, both in the competitive eating world and outside of the competitive eating world. 
But we merged all of that because Mike, Taylor, uh, Thomas, uh, we had um, Julia, Julia of there, yeah. course. Claire. Uh, Claire, you know, dynamite crew. Um, of course, Allison and Kelly, who brought their fresh child. <laughs> that was, what, Leslie, what, what three? What, what uh, did we decide? That was, that was a teeny tiny little baby. That was, there are competitive eating challenges that are oh. bigger than that child, for sure. Yeah, it was uh, it was a family affair. That's for sure. It really was. And uh, I guess Leslie, off the top, I mean, obviously you've uh, been telling us for years to go to this contest. Many, many other competitive eaters cite it as their favorite contest of the year, including Nathan's. Um, what, as someone who not only has been in the crowd for a few of these, but also been at the table for gyoza, what do you feel makes the contest so special? Why is this one of the big ones? I think with this one, it's that there's so much of a spectacle to it. Like there's, there's the spectacle, but there's also like this kind of, there's like a community feel to it. Like there, you, you get there and like, there's a tent full of people excited to see you. There's stalls of vendors. There's just, there's just a lot of people that are there to have a good time and they know what's on the docket. Right. They're there for it. They're all in. They will wait through four or five contests for the main event. Like they're ready for it. Yeah. And I, you know, the, the one thing that struck, I mean, again, obviously it had such a reputation amongst all the eaters. We had a Corey, uh, Corey Hayashi, the, the godfather of the gyoza contest. Big um, one up for Corey. Yeah. <laughs> Big for one sure. for Corey. For 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 all the Hayashi's really for, for Kristen for what as well. They she gets a Kristen. separate one. I mean, this could get this could get dangerous, but yeah. Mm. I got to meet Mrs. Hayashi. Cheers to Mrs. Mm-hmm. Hayashi. Also, cheers to Mrs. Hayashi. To all the Hayashi's. Um, man, this video thing is really bugging me. I think it looks great. I think it looks fine. I, I like it better when Leslie is taking over. Yeah. Show. Let's just make this a Leslie. <laughs> show. Um, Let's not. This is like this is like when they're like, oh, like. It takes over the show, like, <laughs> and you just we talk, but it's just you on camera. <laughs> That's fine time. by me. Um, but the you know the Hayashi's and the team that they've put around them for gyoza for the past thirteen years, um, it it's just really is something special. And honestly, right off the bat, I could tell you know I I showed up for my uh, emceeing duties. They Wait, had a, Michael. You MC this? Yes, I, I didn't what? Want to, Wait, I, Mike okay. Sullivan? We are not going to Are Sullivan? you a competitive eating MLE sanctioned MC? Yes. I Sir, am. do you wear the hat? I do wear the hat. Do I you do. have it in this house? I do have it in this apartment. Wow. It is here. James, did you know? No. You thought I kept it off site? No, I just, I didn't even, I, I, I thought that this was an imposter <laughs> that I saw when we were out there. So, yes, I was. Very, very fortunate enough to get the opportunity to MC the uh, Daily Foods World Gyoza Eating Championship. Sell the sponsor. You, that's an MC. <laughs> very, 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 very fortunate. And honestly, the Hayashis and all of Team Gyoza made my job so much easier yeah. than it normally is because they just do such a good job of putting on an event. And that isn't you know a slight on any of the other sponsors that actually I, name I've, the sponsors that are worse than that let's, specifically I'm, no, no, no in order one. rank them yeah but that's for a different episode episode maybe 100 <laughs> that's, that's the last episode <laughs> yeah, thing, right. um, all fantasy everything yeah, yes. yeah we'll fantasy draft <laughs> we'll draft mike's least favorite <laughs> <laughs> competitive eating sponsors um but they you know you never know what you're going to get when you yeah. show up to to an event you know sometimes the sponsors are super into it have thought about it you know and and this is their main focus other times you know they're putting on a a much larger event and the eating contest is just a part of it and it's amazing what with the gyoza contest where there is this much larger event of nisei week the you know the week plus long festival that goes on and the many many events that go on but the gyoza contest has become you know, in my opinion, a real centerpiece, uh, you know, event for them. You know, I think they, you know, they put it in a really good spot on Saturday afternoon, yeah, you know, the second time, weekend. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, they, they take it very seriously. And of course they take the contest very seriously, which really shows. So I showed up a few hours early for the eater meeting, which normally I, as the MC will have the eater meeting right. as 
whenever the eaters show up, which tends to be like ten minutes before I'm about to go no, out on stage. No, it doesn't seem like that type of group. It's hurting. Yeah, no, cats. not for gyoza. Hurting cats, but for gyoza, they show up hours ahead of time. Hours. Pick up their jerseys, sign the posters, sign a jersey that I, I feel I think they use to like raise money or something like that, oh. or they or they give to people as thank yous. So. And sponsor, you know, like for the sponsorship. Though. Yeah, absolutely. And I wish I saved a copy of it, but there is an official rule book mm-hmm. for yeah, the meals of eating contest. There, do you have one nearby, Leslie? That would Ooh, stand by. Um, wow. So I will just if it take vamp. a quick just look. Vamp for like vamp it... for like twenty seconds. <laughs> so they, I show up, and you know, Corey and Kristen and and Jess and you know the rest of the amazing yeah. team that they have. They're there and they're just going through like some of the basics. Okay, it's going at this time, this, that, and the other, and here's this. Then I feel like it was Corey who pulled it out. He pulls out this paper pamphlet that is the official rule book of the Gyoza Eating Championship. And he's about as passionate. I mean, I obviously have not met the other sponsors that you've worked with, sure. but you know, you you'll report back from the field again as a major league eating MC, um, and or just like you know, seeing interviews or he's as passionate about this as anybody. Yeah, as oh, anybody in the world. In the box. Oh, what's in the box? All right. It's like in a box. This is this is not happening today. That's all right. That's all right. I should put on the ground. This one I should have planned ahead of time, but I didn't. Also, I I didn't even think that we were gonna need props. This yeah. is not normal. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. This isn't a normally <laughs> prop based show, but um, Corey is is as uh, he's just as passionate as it gets. He. he He's excited and engaged and, like, really loves it. Absolutely. So it's no surprise that there's something like a printed – like, that's a bit that, like, the three of us love. <laughs> right, And right. that's why Corey's, like, good with us because that's a bit. But it also, it also, like, it, it you feel very taken care of when you yes. when you get there and it's just like, oh, here's here's a little, like – it's a rule book, but it's also a nice little keepsake to have yeah. and, you know – or you know, or if you know, if you're not that person who keeps it, you, you know, it's just something that's nice to have for the moment that you have it, and right. then you do whatever with it. Yeah. And like, the not only does it have the rules of how the contest goes, it also talks about a very detailed deduction system that they yes. they put as part of the contest. Helpful for an MC, I imagine. Well, it's just helpful in the sense of controlling the eaters, right. because you know, I I've never heard this out of the mouth of any of the eaters, but I'm pun intended, but I'm sure that some of them have a thought process of, oh, maybe I'll hedge my bets and eat a little bit messier and <laughs> hope that I won't get as rough of a deduction if they're only kind of eyeballing it right. versus trying to go through and eat clean and waste time. Well, at Gyoza, they take all of your debris, they weigh it, they're looking at it throughout the, the contest. If you, yeah, if you get, in the beginning, you get a one-for-one one debris, but as you start to go over, it becomes 1.25, one and a half, yeah, you get, two you get times. Like a, there's like a debris bucket. It's great. Whoa. You get a penalty flag. It's So you might be eating, I don't remember offhand, but let's say you have, you know, six ounces of debris. Instead of being six ounces, it's actually 1.5. So it's actually nine ounces of a deduction. Whoa, that I like. They have the judge watching you, and if they feel you're getting to that deduction point, they'll throw a flag onto the table, so which no, I didn't see happen during also, the 2019 Micah, contest. I'm not, that's because you're warned ahead of time. I'm not here to play Monday morning quarterback because, again, I thought you were delightful. That ne- That's all you need to talk about next time you do this contest. <laughs> I would I would have listened to that for hours. This is unbelievable. It's very interesting. Yeah, and, and especially because – I want to see the flags. I want to get a judge. I and, again, at, at other contests, and uh, you know, this isn't a slight because it's honestly the majority of the other contests far and away, it's just the MC. And while mm-hmm. I'm on stage and, and trying to be funny and making sure that you have, though. yeah, sure, I, and have, the eaters have plates and also keeping an eye out to make sure no funny business is going on. I try to, you know, you warn people for debris. Yeah. No shenanigans. Each eater has a judge that is, is looking out for them. Right. And so on. and also, just to top off the whole rule book conversation, details about the after party are outlined in the oh, yeah. rule book. Uh-huh. Which, is, if anyone has ever been to a competitive eating contest, which obviously the three of us have been, um, I believe that the eating contest is, is maybe paramount. It's maybe even more important. I'm sorry, the, the after party is even yeah, maybe more important than the, uh, the, the eating contest for some. Many people, many people feel maybe that Maybe myself. I'm not going to say yes or no. <laughs> many people feel that way. Um, but, so, you know, we can all agree the Hayashis are amazing yes. and put on an amazing, amazing contest. Let's talk about the contest a little bit. Um, 
you know, a little bit. Oh, there you there are, James. Is, hey, oh, James. Oh, there's a Instagram. child. You can see the outline of the child. <laughs> Um, so the, the 2019, uh, daily foods, world gyoza eating championship, uh, let's just rip the bandaid off and talk about it right up front. Yep. Joey Chestnut wins, I believe his seventh or eighth title. I think it was his seventh title. Um, which third in a row, third in a row that should, I mean, you would know, Leslie, you were at, he definitely won last year and I'm pretty sure, yeah, he won the year before. Yeah. It was the year that, before Stoney, that. Stoney won the year, the year that. Uh, that he won Coney in the year, crazy. the year of the, the year of the, the chestnut trials. So maybe um, that was his fourth. Whoa. Whoa. This is the type of the content. trials, the trials wow. and tribulations. Trials and tribulations of a Joseph Josh chestnut. <laughs> um, but Joey did take home the crown, but you know, we were talking a little bit beforehand and he, he won by a commanding margin but so much but nowhere near his his world record so james how do you what do you feel about that like a large margin on the scorecard in 2019 yep. but very far from the um 384 gyoza world record that he set in 2014 winning with 314 daily food gyoza so on the record but um you know behind the scenes chit chat that i got because Michael, I keep calling him Michael tonight. You were working um, as well. He was. he was he was working in an official capacity that weekend. That's right. I, not to call him Michael. Because Sam Barclay calls him Michael. That's what I got. I have it in Michael. Um, Michael. So because Mike was busy um, with the hat, I was you know I was getting scoops. Um, and Matt Hungry Hazard did one of my favorite bits, which is where he said, "I'll never really say this. And I know you hate this, but the gyozas weren't slow, but they weren't going down great." And I was like, thank you for caveating, because no, they're not slow. You just couldn't eat them. Um, but I believe that if it, it's about the like the percentage, right? So if Joey ate 400 and ate you know, 30% more than the next guy, or ate 314 and ate 30% of the next guy, he's still crushed. Like The number has always been like ebb and flow. And I believe, I consider this to still be a crush. So the 314, I'm not as worried about if I'm like, judging the performance because he still handily beat a very talented and very motivated Darren Breeden. Yeah, 256 for Darren for second. Do you want to do a, a quick top five? Sure. This is not my job. That's all you. Oh, I, wow. I did it. On, I <laughs> you did got it on the paper. Two. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, thank you, Mike, for printing out the paper. Um, first, Joey Josh Chestnut with 314. Again, down from about 377, I believe, was his record, or 380? 384 is a 2014 record, yeah. Okay. I think he ate 377 last year. Okay. Maybe the year before. No, actually, I think that was 2017, actually. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like last year wasn't wasn't that It was also a, a little bit lower. Last year was a bit of a downturn from the year before. So down about 60 or so uh, with 314 for Joey. Darren with 256. Again, about 60 behind. Um, Matt Megatoad Stoney, who is a God at this contest. I need to say we can. Uh, Two thirty-eight. Uh, Juan more bite Rodriguez, who we might talk about later, with a very <laughs> nice one eighty-eight finish. And then again, the aforementioned Mad Hungry Hazard coming in fifth place at one hundred and eighty. So um, what's that like? A uh, hundred and forty less than um, than Joey, or one hundred and thirty less. Um, and that's your top five. Again, none of these names are going to be new to anybody who listens to our show, which is, again is still a mistake for listening. Um, but. Um, a really good showing from Juan, and again, Joey crushing a really talented field. Um, Leslie Ryder, as the only person here who has actually been a competitive eater. Do and you, eaten in this contest. And eaten in this contest. Do you Sorry. see something? Those are relative terms. Uh, very loose. <laughs> very loose uh, interpretations of both of those. But do you see something different from Joey in like a 380 versus a 314 performance? Or does it seem like yeah, you know, he's still himself, but the numbers are just going to be lower because of whatever. I think I he's he's doing fine. Like he's still he's still Joey. He's still doing what he's going to do. Uh, he just doesn't have that person next to him who's going plate for plate with him to push him to shovel that extra, you know, seventy five. That's going to make him want to be like, no, I want four hundred on the back right. of my shirt next year. Now, do you do you think that even on a slow year, Joey's still capable? And we'll use slow sort of, you know, in all of the, the things you need to say around that. Do you think he's still, like, do you think he's 100 better than Darren Breeden? Like, he could eat 370 and just be that much better than, than the next person? Um, it, it might just, it, 
I think it might just happen to have to do with uh, his familiarity with the gyoza. Like yeah. he's been he's been doing this contest since like how old is Darren Braden? Like <laughs> honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Like I could really go either way. For this. Like I don't like I don't want to like. How old uh, do we think? Hit up Think Fan Forum. Here's what I know. How old do you think, Darren do you think Darren Braden is? I know that Stoney and Carmen at this point are 25, and they mm. they were the youngest people on the circuit with, like, including Darren. So he, okay. I mean, I, 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 I honestly could go either way. Like, someone so could be like, 24. Darren's like, 42, and I'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, he checks out. Okay, he I guess. No. Like, <laughs> I'll say this: he's driven a car and he did it amicably. I mean, amicably, uh, amiably. Uh, he did it well. Uh, so he's of driving age. We know that. Okay, so he's a, he's eighteen. He's eighteen. <laughs> I have so no... I, it could be that Joey could have been doing this contest since like before Darren was eating solid food. Like that could he's be just, it. He's good at this. That could be it. Because as we know, the Major League Eating website is not really great on fact-checking. No, no. So whatever it says there could be... I'm actually going to find out. You guys continue. I'm going to look and see what they say. Um, but uh, what about in that top five, Leslie? Any um, any standouts for you? Um, I think this uh, that might be the highest finish we've seen for One More Bite. That that kind of jumps out. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to see a finish uh, that high for him. Uh, he gets first place in the flex-off. He gets fourth place uh, <laughs> Uh, a fourth place finish. Um, yeah, I mean, for a for a contest that that pays out to tenth to tenth place, you kind of have to push yourself to really get into get into that place that uh, stands out. You know, hot off the presses, Darren Breeden listed as thirty years old on MajorLeagueGaming.com, which means it could be that's like a I wouldn't say a minus, but you have like a plus three range yeah yeah the um what's the um like when they do polls it's like the um the, oh like the plus or minus the, yeah the... wow i should know this <laughs> yeah you should um wow anyway so fink beats the stomach not exactly pollsters um but the um he he could be 34 or 26 is essentially where i'm gonna sure be. margin of error bang. margin of error there you go thoughts on one more bite rodriguez because i know this was something that jumped out to you as well i have a little I, star I next leslie time. you do have a little star on the paper um, what does that star mean to you so there are... <laughs> it means that one more bite is a star um so i have one more bite as 188 i said this to you that day after the contest that i am with no disrespect to Juan, but never did i think that when they were announcing the when you were announcing the winners that he was going to make it up there and that to me suggests that it was a great performance from him because yep. we've seen stuff he's eaten before and he's just not been there yep so one he came with just like shot out of a cannon and two that this is something that it seems like consistency pays off like a lot of the people who have been there before did really well we even look at a rich uh, the locust Lefevre at 155. Obviously, half of what Joey ate, but finishing in a top 10 for rich locust Lefevre is significant. So, like, I like to think that not only is this like a hometown contest for everybody and that they really love coming back, but as you come back more, you seem to get rewarded by knowing this contest because Juan has done this one before, I believe. Oh yeah, many times. Yeah, many times. Yeah. So uh, it seems like it pays off to sort of, to sort of have that home cooking um, for this contest, which really fits into the whole like ethos of at least how we're selling the, uh, the contest. Feels and also, good to come home. It does. And it feels good to just be in LA when we were out there. But um, also, big ups to Juan. Like, a great performance. Like, you deserve it. You did great. We're proud of you. Um, I love to see him succeed, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. I You know, something that really struck me when we were doing our Coney uh, uh, lead up was it was interesting that this kind of old guard of, you know, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, but the major league eating kind of mid carters, yeah. like those um, middle tier eaters that weren't like the one, two, three that people were talking about at Nathan's as who, who's going to take the title. Who's going to challenge Joey? Like whatever. Then there was always that chunk of, you know, especially when we started doing the show, you know, your wands, your Adrian's, your Eric the Reds, your Pablos, like yeah. stuff like that. People who were eating 30 or so hot dogs in 2019, they were in the bottom tier. Yeah. You know, we talked through 
all of the younger, like newer faces on the circuit, they were in that kind of like dark horse tier of like, go, you know, could they make a surprise to go out to fifth place? And it was almost a bummer to see someone like Juan, who's obviously someone who's been close to the show from the very beginning, yep. down in that lower tier. So to see him in the top five, I was very excited about it. And as Leslie mentioned, I loved that um, the social media of, of Gyoza at e- Eat More Gyoza, they do content year round. So if you're yeah. not following them, follow them. Um, that they did this whole flex off thing, and he was able to win the flex off and got a special, um, you know, sleeveless denim vest, which was pretty awesome. And it's so perfectly one more bite. Yeah, and then that it was him and Sarah in the final two was very funny. Perfect. Um, so I was glad Juan got his day. Juan had a good uh, Gyoza contest, I, I feel like, in, in 2019, which is always good to see. And so I think about this a lot, and I'm going to do two things that could potentially take us off track. But I'm going to do the first one that's way more of a tangent first so that we can maybe potentially go back on uh, on track in a second. George Chigger, 142, finished George 11th. Chigger. I will guarantee that he's in the top seven next year because the continuity works. If he comes back, he's going to be a top seven guy. Um, that's just something that I want on the record now. Second, I, I think, and this is something you just sort of alluded to, there's this like Gideon OG, one more by type, as you put them, like mid-card people, that we talk about for like a couple months of being like, oh, I think this is going to be it. Every so often we do a spotlight or something similar. We'll say like, yeah. this is the year they go into the top four or five. Gideon, it feels like, is mostly just like missing contests and late. Um, but <laughs> He was it, supposed to be at the pizza contest yesterday and then... Ah, oh, Gideon. <laughs> so I, I find this really interesting to see that like one more bite maybe was, was, was that and never really reached as high as we thought maybe he could have or we wanted him to. Uh, but... Yeah, there's still time. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It's oh, like, sorry. So that no, but it, I, this is why we're um, we're we're actually great on the show um, because we feel exactly the same. Like, is is that window maybe longer than we thought it was? And when is it like? Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is still. It's not linear. It's not just like tick 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 up to the top. Maybe Juan has like a second act and maybe Gideon has like a weird sort of lull and they get back. Those people I think are really interesting when we see like Hazard comes in. Yep. We think now it's like, oh great, Hazard's new Juan, great, done. Right, right, like, right. Like, oh, is he really? He's coming into that. Like, Chigger's new Gideon, big guy, great. I mean, it really? Like, I like to think that like, there's a lot more of this story to be told. And to me, like something like this really makes everything more interesting. Well, in that regard, Leslie, if I can, if I can ask you, so you were a major league eater for two years, I believe you had on the circuit, like a year and a half. So we round up here. Figures. Yeah, we round up. We round up um, more yeah, ways than one. Change. And I, but you had, uh, you know, I know that you, um, you had your qualifier in Sonoma was your first Nathan's qualifier. It was right before the fourth, if I remember correctly. Uh-huh. Week then, before. Right, right, a week before. <laughs> And then, you know, you had a whole year of being on the circuit, talking to a lot of the eaters, probably, you know, having a few tricks of the trade. How much do you feel is like, what is sort of in your mind, the growth plan of being a competitive eater of, you know, of course, there's you just show up and see how you do. Then I would assume, correct me if I'm wrong, there's some sort of like basic things that people can give you. And then is there that window of like, if I put the work in, I can get up to that top level where maybe someone like a Juan of what James is talking about could have that push now that he's like, I'm going to dedicate this time. Or do you feel that once you get past that initial like tips and tricks, you sort of kind of top out based on who the person is? Like, how did, what was your experience like and what's your perspective on that? Mm, I feel like for for me, it was more of like a, personally, I, I probably tapped out around the, the tips and tricks uh, section, but I think where, where uh, Gideon and Juan stand, like they can, they can do this for as long as they want to. They're, they're young, they're fit guys, like Gideon is, is still like, Still, he still to me is like that young, fresh guy who's like straight out of college who right. is, you know, he, he will run, run sprints baseline to baseline right. as long as you want, as long as you want him to. Um, 
I think Especially it'll if just... coach is mad. I mean, gonna... Yes, yeah, the coach is mad. Because um, well, he's late to practice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it for them, I think it's just a matter of like, do they do they want to keep doing it? Um, is it still making them happy to do it? Do they still want to be around it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's really, really a matter of uh, the old does this does this spark joy for me to do? Yeah, I mean, I. So I, what I will say is, you know, there have definitely been eaters that I have talked to over the years of us doing this, the you know, the show and becoming friends with people, and it seems like there is this aspect of, you know, I'm here, right. and if I put the time in, I definitely think I can get to here. Right. But there's still like. Joey and Esper and Darren, like these people who are kind of in that upper tier, are still kind of that that upper level. And and it's I, I don't know. I would you know I'd be interested to almost ask Juan that question straight yeah. up because Juan is a good example of someone who's been around for a long time on the circuit. He's seen a lot of people come and go. Yeah, he's been at a lot of different contests. He clearly has the mental fortitude to dedicate himself to something with his you know his profession with all of his with all of his mind with all of his stuff you know yeah. he has going on um so i'd be curious if he if he feels that he's at a point where it's just like you know like i'm doing what i think is everything i can and this is how i'm doing or if it's like you know what there is that extra level but it would take me basically like getting rid of my social life because every single day i'm doing xyz or you know this physical aspect of it you know right i don't know it's yeah like is it is it possible to, and this is like now we're way off topic, but, but we're here. Is Get it off topic? Is it possible to like be third forever in this world? Because there's not, if you're the third best basketball player, you're a very popular and professional basketball player. If you're the third best competitive eater, you're not making enough money to cover your flight. Like, so sure. unless you're Joey or Stoney, um, because even like Mickey Sudo, like, does not make a living off of competitive eating, and has, I f- I would think if she did, would be at more contests. Yeah. Um, so like, can you be the third best forever, or you're just like, wow, you know what? I'd really like to like have a life. Um, yeah. And so you see that like four, five, six, be like a shooting star of like four, five, six for like a year, and then like, you know what? I'm gonna Carmine Cincotti. I'm gonna go work for the New York Times, and like. He is to me like the prototypical. I'm surprised there's not more of them, people, yeah. and that's why it's like nice to see like this sort of second act of one more bite. I hope this is the sign of more things to come for somebody like Juan. No, it's I'm true. getting now excited in a way I didn't think I was going to. When <laughs> we start talking Juan about Juan. All people. Yeah, like I, I don't know why. I just really I'm enjoying this storyline of like the second act of one more bite. I mean, you re- you make a really good point because especially now that we've been doing the show for like five years, yeah, which isn't that long of an amount of time it's not but, not long well we, but we've seen the rise and fall of like people that we've been excited about and and cared about and yeah whatever. leslie you being one of them in terms of your professional eating career of right. course we, we still yeah. love and you're you have second and third and fourth acts as far as yeah. i'm concerned but <laughs> uh, but i even think about that with with a matt hazard because right. i look at matt as i mean he just finished his second full year on the circuit yep he goes to a lot of different contests but talk you know having talked to him about it it's like he's a young kid who has a good job he travels for his job yeah and he is able to kind of fit this into his schedule and is choosing his free time to go and do this like yeah even as an mc where you know i am getting paid to like go go do some of this stuff it still is hard when you have you know i my wife at home yep. soon i'm gonna have a baby at home mike like, that's not nice to call me that yeah <laughs> james is here but like you know you you start to like life starts to happen and and competitive eating is the most conducive thing yeah. to it and you see people like you know i look at a pablo martinez who's a father of two and and has a wife who he's lucky is very very supportive of this whole thing but right. also he's going to basically the west coast contest and then him and him and season will go to you know a florida contest that they'll make into a vacation and but for the most part they're really just doing the stuff that's like pretty easy for them to get to so it's actually and some people just kind of fizzle out so it's actually interesting you you say that because i was thinking that potentially the best thing for each other's competitive eating careers are sarah and juan's relationship so like do you need to have like whether it's 
um, and this is, I mean, you can say relationship of any kind, like, is the best thing for Mickey and Shelly's competitive eating career their friendship? Is the best thing for Juan and Sarah's career, competitive eating career, their relationship? Like, Joey needs someone to push him for his career. Like, it all takes different forms if you saw the 30 for 30. Like, someone needs to go there and be like, Joey, you gotta push it, you gotta push it, you gotta push. It's a really interesting thing, and maybe this is something about, like, individual sports into itself that, like, and this is way more philosophical than it should get, but, like, are. humans are social creatures. Like, we need the second person, and it's really interesting to see that, like, I'm going to credit whether he would or not or Sarah would or not a lot of their sort of continued success on the fact that they're doing it together. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they both have had a really solid year i think sarah's really taken off yeah. the last couple of years like i think that this like this has been her best years of this year or nathan's i mean i know she's personally like disappointed in her in her nathan's performance yeah. but like you know that's it's only gonna get better like the like any she has the mentality she has to to get down to it the next day and just go right back at it and just be like fuck it we're going again. <laughs> no, but it, it, it is true, I think. And kind of talking about Sarah, it's like she she's someone who, you know, we saw her break onto the scene. I, I feel like it was Peeps was her first contest. We're like, mm -hmm. whoa, here's this woman coming out, big personality, you know, vocal on social media. She comes in. And Juan and Sarah are, are very much this duo, both obviously in life, but also in competitive eating where, you know, they have the photo shoot together. They're, they're promoting each other. They're doing food challenges or doing the thing and I, and I feel like that social aspect definitely helps yeah and Leslie I'm curious to hear your perspective on you know it can be like what's the let me start off with like what's the farthest that you've traveled to go to a competitive eating con to compete in a competitive eating contest mm, the for me there were a lot of contest in like the Northern California area around the time that I was competing that have kind of fizzled out since then, which is a little disappointing. Um, pumpkin not pie. Gonna... Yeah. Like there was pumpkin pie. There was, there ribs. was tacos, there was bacon, there was ribs, there is yeah. all sorts of stuff. There was, uh, uh, I didn't do baked bear, but like I went down to, I went down to travel and see it, but like, I mean the the dis the disappearance of the West Coast contest has uh, you know hopefully it won't be like a detriment to their progress sure. that they've been kind of making. I mean like I I feel like they'll they'll find a way to to make it work. They'll they've already they've traveled to to contests that are out of the way, but I mean I'm sure they'd be a lot happier if they didn't have to do that. Sure. It's like you know who doesn't want to have to leave their backyard and go to the airport and yeah. do all that sort of nonsense if they don't have to. But how, how was it for you? You know, you like, I, I will never, I don't know if you remember this, but like, I'll never forget your first year on at Nathan's and James and I were kind of like hanging out, like doing interviews and you, uh, you had come over and I knew I recognized you from like, Oh, like this is one of the women that qualified a little bit later and this, that, and the other. <laughs> and I remember I looked at you and I was like, Hey, like Liz McClurg. Like, <laughs> I remember, Cause I remember in my head, I had like, who are like the three women that we haven't met uh. yet that like, I know. And you were like, no, like Leslie Ryder, and then like it clicked, and I was like, "Oh right, Leslie Ryder." And then you know, I know we, we did like a quick interview, but yeah. but again, you you came on the scene, and like I assume you didn't really know any of the other ears on the circuit, and like so now you're yeah. traveling to all these random places that don't have the hubbub and the spectacle, and also obviously you have family and friends in the New York area, so you're going to these weird places, and you don't have that. Was that? difficult like was that like james mentioned that like social aspect of competitive eating was that hard in the beginning Did, were there any eaters that you like specifically kind of took to that kind of made the trip worth it or made you feel more welcome i mean not really like the nathan's nathan's weekend in itself was pretty good at, at like was a pretty solid orientation of like Impressive. okay here's everyone like this is this is the gang um get to know them um i mean i could kind of like that very first time I was at Nathan's, there was like a, a meetup 
uh, the night before, Crazy Likes like sent an email that was like, "Hey, here's he here's what we're doing." Um, and like at the W Hotel, we had a, a little get together, and like Michelle was like, "Hi, I'm Michelle." Yeah, classic. Nice yeah. You. Um, and so it helps that you know, like she was at all the West Coast contests and was always cool and like welcoming, and you know, made me feel like I was part of the crowd. And uh, Mickey was always friendly. Um, the the first um, we were we were coming back from uh, Coney Island. She we uh, we took a subway ride together. There's a there's like a photo of all of us on Instagram somewhere, of, like all of us taking the subway together. There's like 15 of us. And after we got off, she was like, "Hey, I'm really sorry if I seemed really like standoffish before. I just get like really like hyped up and like in my head and like I try not to talk to anyone. So like if I seem really mean, like I'm really sorry. And I'm yeah. just like, hey, no, 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 not at all. Like you're you're the champ. Like that's uh, like not my thinking at all. But uh, yeah, like she like kind of went out of her, out of her way to be like, yeah, no, hi, I'm Mickey. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, I never really felt like a, an unwelcomed person out on the road. Uh, it was just kind of like something that was fun to do on a weekend. And I'm sure that makes it easier, right? Like going, if, if everyone was kind of like a dick, like would you, would you <laughs> yeah, have I, gone to Sparks? No, I wouldn't have gone back. Like, <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> there, there would, like, I wouldn't have gone back if, if everyone was a dick, like that would have made it worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's, and, and I think like back to your point, I think that that helps and that yeah. helps like, keep a lot of these people coming back and say you know what i'm going to use my free time to to go out and especially you look and i, I think this is kind of a, a good segue to someone like adam beard meets food moran oh a man on an island literally uh, he literally and we're not talking about long island we're talking he about flew across the ocean to come here he keeps coming back so, to the u.s for these contests I'm i don't get it he's just got free miles that are expiring i'm convinced <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, because clearly he's he's talented as hell. But these just are not the con. Like he knows it, we know it. They're not the contest for him. He finished again. This is so weird that I'm reading all these results. But he finished tenth in the contest with 151 gyoza. Roughly That's in the money. Less That's in the money. So he took home, I think it was 25 or 50 bucks. Great. So like the cab fare to the bar, he took home. Um, mm, depends on where you're staying. Right. Um, <laughs> So and that, that'll than, get you to LAX. Right, less than half of Joey. Um, and again, it's not because he's like a clown. He's just, this wasn't the food for him. I believe he admitted he had never seen a gyoza before this contest. So he, because we, we had to mentioned this off air. Uh, I, so when I got to the eater meeting, he was one of the first people that got there. Yeah. And so we're, we're in this, uh, this cultural center and we're kind of in like the lobby of this like, theater. JCCC, I believe. Is that JCCC? There are three C's. The extra C. Uh, oh, gotta sorry. have the extra C. I didn't want to sound like I was stuttering. <laughs> and um, we're in this kind of like back office room. It's just me and him. I'm kind of putting my stuff down or whatever. And I started chit chatting with him. And I just said to him, I was like, hey man, like I'm just curious, like, have you ever eaten gyoza before? Yeah. Like, is that like, is Japanese food like a really big deal? Is it readily available? Like in England, you know, like blah, blah. And he yeah, was just always no. He was it's... like, he was like, honestly, like, I don't know if I've, I've had it maybe once before. Like, I don't know if I've ever had it before. Like, and that's what I love. He just kind of w flew literally across the world yeah. to go to the West coast. It's not like this was a New York. Contest. I was mad flying to the right, West coast from right. New York. Yeah. So he had double the flight to, to go, and, you know, he showed up having, you know, may, possibly never eaten a gyoza before. Yeah. Possibly will never eat one again. Um, <laughs> I mean, they were delicious. For life. They were delicious, FYI. But it, it has to be... They were. James, James sampled some. Yes. yes. More than a couple. More than a few. Um, but I think it's pretty awesome that, you know, obviously he's, uh, you know, very popular on YouTube. He's definitely more known for eating these kind of like bigger challenges over a longer period of time. Sure. But I, I just think as a as an MC, as a fan, yeah. I very much appreciate having this new energy of the number one competitive eater in the UK. And, you know, obviously like he has the beard and he, he's very people charismatic. Yeah, people yeah. love the right beard. There. Who doesn't love the beard? Um, I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it's great as well. Um, you know, I find interesting, again, this is going to have to be a quick tangent because we're nearing an hour, but um, it clearly makes sense for him for his YouTube to come to this thing because he... It's new content. I can't yeah, I, I can't believe that he thinks cash. he's going to win this contest. Um, 
but so what does that do for a major league eating contest when it becomes a promotional event for your YouTube? Like, Leslie, I mean, it, it, you are uh, someone who the Fink, the Fink brothers as a Fink cousin have obviously asked to be in, in the field. Um, and we'll talk about some of the other um, fun stuff that you're doing um, on social media and the like. But like, I think in fact, maybe that makes you the best person to talk to. Like, what does that do for a major league eating contest if there are three or four people who come there who are saying, this is good for my content, I'll finish 11th, but my video is gonna get 10,000 views. 10 million. Um, I mean, it's it's good free promotion for Major League Eating, whether uh, whether they want it or not. Uh, it's like you have you have Darren Breeden up there, you got Matt Stoney up there, you got Beer and Meets Food, you got, you got Juan Niaves with his following, you got, it, it's kind of the wave, the wave of the future for, uh, for, eating large quantities of food sure. it's it's happening online yeah. and now you bring it it's a, you also have this thing where it's it's also happening in real life so you you the marriage of the two seems like a a natural segue so i would love to see the at home youtube challenge people really embrace the contests in a way that it seems beard has uh, because as you mentioned, like we know Darren Breeden and Matt Stoney from contests who have parlayed that into YouTube. Correct. I hope that more people sort of take it the opposite way and that we see them say like this as a contest is a really important part of my competitive eating life for obvious reasons, because we all enjoy contests and major league eating and all pro and all the rest. It's just, a, it's an old school versus new school mentality. And I'm not talking about bad lens book here, go. but Oh gee, um, <laughs> but I will say that like I um, now it's cut me out, leave me out of here. There, no, no way, um, never. But you know, I agree with you one hundred percent. But I don't know if it's because I'm getting old in my competitive eating mm-hmm. and media consumption. Because I agree, I, I think there's something awesome to be able to. I mean, listen, as someone who goes to fake comic con because leslie goes to real comic con i wish i was as cool as leslie but as you know it's cool to go physically to an event and see these people that you watch on your television screen and get to interact with them and meet with them it's a very small group of people who can go see competitive eaters live correct you're not giving that many more but if someone like uh let's let's say a beard meets food like he's a good example if he never did anything with major league eating granted he did fly over to do um an all pro the highway 55 burger contest him and leah shakiba did it um but that's a really cool almost like comic-con like event of like oh you know let's say if every single major league eater also had this massive youtube following yeah then major a major league eating event not only becomes this eating contest for major league eating to promote the sponsor, but it also almost becomes this YouTube comic con oh, yeah. type of which that's happening more and more. Well, they, they, I'm surprised they haven't had anything at like VidCon if, if that's VidCon, kind of the way exactly. where can where the, you yeah, guys like, tell me what that is. That's kind of like the the comic con that happens i think they have it in anaheim but it's like a big like youtuber conference basically where it's like there's lots of youtubers there and they do panels and like huh yeah well so leslie i mean i i don't know if this is a fair question so you can just punt on it if you want to but like do you feel like there's a um like a hierarchy like is it more noble like do you enjoy the people who are doing contests as their bread and butter over YouTube videos. Like, do we think, do we think there's a pecking order? I mean, Mike, we can all answer this for ourselves, but like, let's say, cause again, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but like, is there a pecking order of like, oh, actually the people who cut their teeth doing contests are the real eaters and the YouTube people are like the scan, like the scabs. Like, I obviously, that's a very I don't know. I don't know that there is such a, such a pecking order. I mean, you know, if you're gonna, if, your way to get that bread is to do <laughs> do uh, do videos on on YouTube and like you've amassed a following. Like, dude, make that money. Like, right. that's 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 up to you to do. Mike. If that if that if that also translates to a ten minute eating contest, then even more power to you. The categories. <laughs> um, Joey Chestnut is a star because of what he's done in Major League Eating. Mm-hmm. Matt Stoney is a star because of what he's done on YouTube. And I feel like there is no, 
in major league eating yeah. and that space there is room for one and in YouTube, Ooh. there is clearly room for more than one. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it think it's endless, but I do feel that it was just. It's very apparent now that I've emceed a handful of contests with Matt Stoney. Yeah, that he gets a reaction of people in the crowd, and it's not just because yeah. he happened to be at the contest the year before that Joey was or was not at, and has whether it's because he's beaten Joey or not, or whether he's won Nathan's or not, I feel he would still have the same YouTube following and would still get the same... I mean, at yeah, like he got a massive reaction. That's a very that's a hometown crowd, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. But that's because of YouTube. And Beard gets the reaction because of YouTube. Yeah. And and also, like, Beard... And, I, you know, I believe this. Like, Beard uh, mentioned... You know, I don't remember the specifics, but he mentioned that someone in L.A. stopped him on the street and was like, hey, like, your Beard meets food. Like, I watch your YouTube videos hey, can we take a picture? Like, yeah. that's not because he ate at July 4th or he yeah. was at the Croquetta contest or he was out at Gyoza. That's because of his YouTube channel. So there's mm. clearly this fame and attention that can come from that. Whereas Joey, although he did like a YouTube thing for a very short amount of time. Yeah, it's wild to me he hasn't It's so uh, that. It, Yeah, it's solely because of... People yeah. clearly just like have the contest and like it's Joey Chestnuts. He's probably from Brooklyn. Wait, he's from California. Uh, you know, um, King so, of Bros, Joey Chestnut. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Joey Juice doesn't help that. By the way. <laughs> right. um, but that's the shift, and I feel that at least me personally, like I'm gonna start to get left in the dust of that because I just as charismatic as I think someone like Beard is, and as well produced as I think his videos are, it's I. I can't, I don't sit down and go. I can't wait to watch Beard's next video. And if you don't think that, that's a, then that's wild. Right. I'm definitely not. But that's for like me and right. you. But there are millions of people. I mean, I don't know what his numbers are, but millions right. of people that watch his videos, that watch Stoney's videos. Yeah. And the same thing. Like every once in a while, there's a cool video I'll watch. But I Badlands Chugs, if you will. Badlands Chugs. I will also watch, I'll watch but any different. Badlands Chugs. But I, I just feel there is this like sort of new school that we are. At least yeah. I can say I am a generation behind. And that's where we're going. I think once Joey retires, let's say, mm-hmm. which we keep trying to put him in the grave. No, but Can I mean, it could be. It could be I keep twenty years from now. Yeah. It's gonna, he's gonna eat for twenty five more years. He's gonna be the Tom Brady. Of, <laughs> but uh, I, I think there is value in YouTube. Clearly, I mean, I do as well. And it's actually what I find really interesting is like, I, you know, I'm a muggle, but like the super muggles, like the real squares, are. Um, <laughs> If we had graphics, we could do one of those. Pulp Fiction. Um, but there are people, like, if I've talked to people, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, like, Matt Stoney, he makes all of his money off YouTube. People are like, oh, okay, I get that. But they think that, like, you're a freak, a borderline freak, if you're, like, out there just going to eating contests. I'm like, oh, he eats, like, 100 McDonald's things, and, like, oh, my God, that's such a cool idea. It's really interesting how, like, the masses almost take that as, like, oh, it's on YouTube. That makes way more sense. Yeah. Um, which, obviously, I see less of because I'm a 1,000 years old. If you're old school, I'm, like, in the grave. Um, but I, if, if we're going to go fully around the horn to me, I um, of my own question, so maybe this is a little self-serving. But, um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy the fact that, that there's a bunch of lanes and, you know, high tide raises all ships, whatever it is. I think it's good for all of us, everybody who's here, like, to both enjoy and cover. Um, maybe we'll finally get a sponsor or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, ultimately... I think they're different in a very serious and very specific way, um, but I don't think that it's like a. I, I don't actually think it's worthwhile to to divide them or create a pecking order. But I do think they are very different things. Yeah, it's essentially like are you gonna do like a slam dunk competition or play in a game? It's like they're not. You can't be like oh well like he made a hundred percent of his threes in the three point competition. It's like well that's not a game. That's not a competition. That's a you're at home. But you're still amazing if you could do it. But and it'll it'll last as long as YouTube lasts. Like, mm. who knows who knows what that is? Because when TikTok <laughs> takes over all video, like Vine <laughs> did, it, it, Vine. TikTok is just new Vine. Am I yes, am I no, right? No, yes, no. Vi- Vine set to music. <laughs> I love that that there's like a new group of like 14 year olds who are like, this is the newest invention ever. Um, you weren't alive when Vine was. <laughs> uh, yeah. If Joey's been doing this for 13 years or whatever, um, Vine has been around for our entire adult lives. Um, 
But I, I don't think it's like a hierarchy, but I do think it's different. And I'm happy that all of it exists because the more competitive eating stuff, the more stuff we can talk about and the more fun we can have. So I welcome all of it and I hope that like everyone gets all the sponsorships they deserve. Um, and I'm psyched about it. I'm, so I'm sorry for the tangent, but I feel like it was worthwhile. No, definitely worthwhile. Huh? I do. Um, I know we're, we're running uh, ahead on time here, but I do. Um, since we were all, in, well, you, the two of you were in the crowd for it. Oh, yeah. Um, I uh, was in my own head for a lot of the contests. But I, I am. You never. never. <laughs> I, I am curious to hear about your thoughts on the, the undercard that happened mm. at the Gyoza Eating Championship. Because, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I think, I feel like every other contest. Almost every contest that I've emceed, um, it's just the eating contest. It's like, hey, be here at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, I'm going to grab the mic and start to chit-chat, do an epic intro, and we go. Um, but there is a very conscious undercard as part of the Gyoza Eating Championship. Yeah. Three events. The first one is um, the Far Bar Little Tokyo Chowdown, which basically has a lot of local community members, well, representatives of local community groups that which support Little Tokyo and Nisei Week, as well as the outgoing court, which includes the 2018 queen and princesses, as well as the outgoing president, which this year was Kori Hayashi, um, in a fun kind of community contest. Then we had the um, uh, Crazy Cuisine uh, Nimin Bowery, which is a uh, Japanese comedy act where two people act as one person and the person acting as hands can't see what's going on but tries to feed the second person yeah, that, that acts as the face. That was my favorite. Um, and then the, the third contest is um, the five-on-five five LAPD versus LAFD uh, rivalry showdown. So three uh, very... Uh, I think different contests, mm -hmm. but three undercard events. I didn't know, um, you know, James, especially having been at Nathan's where there's the female contest and the male contest. And then peppered in between is basically entertainment acts. Yes. But these were very conscious, almost in a boxing sense. Yeah. Of you saw other eating contests mm -hmm. as an audience member. Did it play? Did it work? Did it matter? Were you, you know? How so in a random place, it does not work. It only works because, as we mentioned before, like it's a real community festival. And you could feel it start to grow. And like the people who were there were invested in the community and were there. And other people were there to see them. Like... 80 to 90 percent of the time it doesn't play i thought it crushed i mean it had a lot to do with the mc if i'm being really no, honest but for the undercard. um i i thought all of it was great i thought people really outside like people who actually live in the community really enjoyed it and um you know leslie as a uh a los angelino um do, and what did you think about its community aspect it's it's entertainment value all of it and it's something they uh, do they've done for the past few years so you've seen it kind of yeah yeah, the the Nini Bao the Nini Bao was uh, my favorite. It is so yeah. silly. <laughs> it's so fun. very silly. So silly. Uh, they got the poncho on. The the fact that they that they have to use the chopsticks to to put the gyoza into the mouth uh, adds an added degree of difficulty to it, and and only an uh, an extra element of silliness to it. Yep. Um, Shouts to Hero, the race car driver, by the way. Yeah, hero coming yeah, in a fire suit out of nowhere yeah. and love yeah. him. Yeah, that was just a, a degree of silliness after, you know, after you have the kind of the pomp and circumstance of the of the princess of the outgoing princess court and then you have the you have the silliness and then of course the the rivalry showdown that gets kind of amped up for the for the main event. It's uh it has very good it has a very good flow to it. Yeah, they do really sequence it well. I agree. I th I think the of doing the community event up front and yep. see, it's basically just an amateur geos eating contest. Right. It's funny to be like, hey, everybody, like this is for you. Thanks so much for supporting us. Right. Let's go. And then the second one being not only something like funny, light, and silly, of course, but also so something like <laughs> cultural in a sense of this is something that has evolved and like you'll see like I I feel like I mentioned I meant to mention on stage where on YouTube you'll see a lot of things with like the dog is the head and it has human hands that is an evolution of this originally Japanese comedy act so it's funny it's entertaining but also fits the Japanese cultural festival and then of course who doesn't love a rivalry between the fire department and the police right and that's like a little bit more like let's go right and yeah. it kind of builds you up to the 
So I'm sure a very conscious programming decision by by the Hayashis and Team Gyoza. Um, I I liked it. I mean, as an MC, it's a lot of talking, but I liked it in the Which sense is my favorite of part. I more liked mic. it in the sense of it gives you more bang for your buck. Although it is a free event, but I always feel like when I all even for me like all this build up, all this prep, all of this you know the travel and the thing and the blah, to then basically just come out on stage, do your epic intro, do your eater intros, have a ten minute contest, and then go home. It's nice to give like a full program and also it helps build the crowd too right because they start to hear what's going on what's going over here we come in starts at two okay and by the time the main event comes on it has like a better crowd so right. the more you can make a fuller program out of an eating championship and make it feel like a bigger event the better in my book that's what it yeah i mean i i thought that, that was a really unique part of it um not surprising given everything we know about the contest and how like again at home people feel here um yeah, dynamite. I, I actually we've talked about this before, where we think that more contests should have a community aspect. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like we've talked on the show before about how like people should be like shaking hands before and like, I mean I know look they don't pay you enough to do what you do given all the skills you bring to the the mic, but no. you know being really coming out to the community and saying like hey we're major league eating this is why we're here like that really plays with people and I think you know major league eating. The MC and the uh, the you know the Hayashis and Nisei Week in general have sort of like met in the middle and they're like, hey, great, this is what we're gonna do, and I feel like it really plays. I really I loved it. I do want to give a shout out because I realized we didn't mention um, Daryl Evans, NHL <laughs> legend. Big shouts. Lots of Wayne Gretzky talk, which I appreciated from you. I all of that all of that was for you. I, I just want to be honest because like, the Gretzky booze has been flowing. I was using the glass last night and I was just thinking about him. <laughs> Um, but for anyone who didn't know, so Daryl Evans, who was on the LA Kings in the eighties and is very famously known, very famous in LA known for scoring the game winning goal in what is still considered the greatest comeback in NHL playoff history. They were down five, nothing, I believe. And then they came out, uh, winning six, five in overtime through a goal by Daryl Evans, who now is a color commentator for the Kings, the Mm -hmm. voice of the Kings. Um, and he apparently, you know, I had this intro, you know, built up beforehand, kind of joking about how he wouldn't want to do the contest and that he was almost being forced into it as like a publicity thing. And it turns out, you know, I was talking to, to I think it was Kristen before and Kristen Hayashi beforehand. And apparently like his, they had some sort of connection to the Kings. Cause I think they do promotion as part of Nisei week. And someone like went to them and said, you know, Daryl Evans like what has been wanting nice. to eat in the gyoza contest. Do you have a spot for him? And they were like, yeah, we do. Something to that effect. Yeah. So wow. he seemed like he had a blast. And that was really cool for me to have like a legitimate NHL yeah. star like in the, the contest is, is pretty cool. And so Leslie, a shout out to him. Leslie, as a, um, a hockey fan, is there someone who looks more like an ex NHL player than Daryl Evans? <sighs> I, I mean, he had the, the the thinning hair, the the the, the, the waistline, short, but like the goatee, and still somehow like just like cut, but yeah. like not like he's ever worked out. Fit, fit. Yeah, just like just he barely could boy. wave because his hand was kind of screwed up. Like it was just yeah, <laughs> he was dynamite. I mean, just if like, his teeth were any, were any worse, he would have just been too on point because he actually does have like all of his teeth. I presume they're all fake. You have to you have to wonder if it helped or hurt his gear's performance. In Forty four in in ten minutes. Not a bad number for Daryl Evans. So big shout to him as well. Um, so James, as we wrap this up, any other uh, high points for the contest? Any other things you want to shout out? Anything we didn't cover? So two things. One, I've just I've talked too much, and two, I know it makes you just wildly uncomfortable. So I'll be Stop. short about it. No, it was an absolute pleasure to spend time with friends and family out there, but. A part of that was seeing you be able to do your thing. I've not been able to see you MC. Um, wow, I, really? I, I legitimately yeah, thought, um, yeah, I legitimately thought that, um, you know, you were great and sharp and you, and we talked all about the fact that like, seeing you come into your own is something that's a real pleasure for me. And for that, that's like number one with a bullet. Um, sure. And you. the rest of it was fine, whatever. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much. Thank you for, for entertaining us and for being- I did the uh, best I could. Just the best. I appreciate it. Um, Leslie, uh, and you're not allowed to talk about anything James just talked about. You have to. Anything um, in terms of 
you know, the rankings of anyone or, you know, anything in the event in general for anyone who wasn't there, any like shout outs or, or aspects of it that you want to kind of give ups to? Uh, you know, another strong showing from Joey that, you know, it has come to dominate the the new cycle of, of every competitive eating event. Uh, Darren Breeding making his, his case for, for man uh, number two. Yeah. Um, but you know, it would have been, uh, it would have been interesting to see, uh, how Jeff Esper would have, would have done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you just don't know until, until you see him there. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was really nice to get to see both of you guys, uh, in one weekend, uh, that just doesn't happen ever <laughs> unless I'm at Nathan's, which hasn't happened in a while. And it was really nice to see Mikey on stage. Yeah. I haven't seen him, haven't seen him in a minute. I haven't seen him, uh, I haven't seen him since Bake Bear, uh, May, May Bake Bear rest in peace um yeah it was a it was a good weekend good weekend of eating yeah it, it was a great it was a great weekend um you know all the amazing people you know our competitive eating family our our even closer fin cousins and you leslie it was so good uh being able to hang out hang out with you and your lady as well that was such an amazing opportunity to be able to finally meet her it's awesome um emily they say hi hi emily She's hiding. She's hiding from fake people. No, 100 percent she should. Um, but no, just like you know, not only like the competitive eaters, but even our extended family, like Emily being one of them, and then you know all the like, the significant others and the people and and like especially like Julia and my yeah. like it, it was just you know it, it was an amazing trip. Um, and you know, looking back at the contest itself, because we are you know of course a competitive eating contest. A lot of the uh, you know the the things that we shouted out and talked about. A lot of the people. And, like, even – it just makes me really excited. Like, people like George Chigger and Derek Hendrickson. Right, we, we didn't get to, like, half the people we wanted to talk no, to. No, I know. And we, <laughs> we never do. My tangents. Um, but I just love the two of them tying for 11th place with mm-hmm. 142. And Perfect. George, who came, you know, similar lengths to the contest as, as we did. And Derek, who is this, this young energy that's just super excited about the circuit and super excited to be out there. The two of them just are great examples of people that I know, like – we're going to be seeing again and again and again and and obviously like think favorites of ours um both almost immediately right um so big shouts to them i mean it's a star-studded event i mean 18 eaters 17 uh major league eaters it's no joke and there's no other contest like that except for nathan's right and i loved to see that that is being done by a contest that does isn't this big corporate sponsor it is really this grassroots effort that's really led by Corey Hayashi taking it over, in, you know, years and years and years ago and every year making it better and better and better. And then making, from what I've heard, Nisei Week better and better and better. And then Kristen coming in and taking over the, the, the reins on the Gyoza contest. And they just put such love and care into the eaters having a good time, the MC knowing what's going on, right. everyone that's involved, that the results are good, and just putting on a good show for the crowd as part of the greater Nisei week. And it's awesome because it's really easy for kind of a big company to come in and just throw a bunch of money at it and put on this like really big event. But it really says something that this, for lack of a better term, random fest- local festival <laughs> is ha- is hosting all of these ears who are on ESPN on July 4th and yep. the majority of them on the stage will say that this is their favorite contest of the entire year that and, really speaks volumes and it's one of my favorites as well so big shout out to everybody <laughs> involved Corey just being a sweetheart um, LA for being kind to us beautiful weather beautiful friends obviously beautiful cousins and uh, Leslie Ryder and company um, so yeah maybe maybe <laughs> Oh, oh, you're going to do this? I mean, ideally, you know, you'll be raising children and all the other stuff. So maybe, I don't know. We'll <laughs> talk about it later. No promises on the air. Maybe off the air, off the record. We'll make some, some half hard promises. Um, but, Mike, if I could, I'd love to ask Leslie Ryder. Leslie, one, you've been on the show with us. Two, you've been on the streets with us. But three, you should tell the few people who are still listening to Fink Beat's Stomach where they can... <laughs> Where they can find you, check you out, what are you up to, what can they look for, um, and tell the people what you're about these days. Because you have a ton going on. 
Uh, yeah, ch- uh, check me out. Uh, we're working on uh, Gal Pal Sports right now. We're uh, making some really cool content about women's sports, uh, trying to make it more access- uh, accessible to people. Uh, live tweeting uh, women's games, uh, writing articles, making fun uh, sketch videos, uh, just really having fun with it and seeing where it goes. Uh, we started right before the World Cup, and now uh, we're just running with it. It's, it's pretty fun. And that's at Gal Pal Sports on at Twitter? At Gal Pal Sports on Twitter. On Instagram or? Uh, I believe we have an Instagram. See, yes, also the, at Gal Pal Sports on cross Instagram. Cross-platform. Cross-platform cross, at Gal Pal Sports. Cross-platform at Gal Pal Sports. Um, from, from one um, person who is excited about you and um, actually a great year in sports, but also in women's sports, um, WNBA is popping right now. The, yeah. the push on the, w, uh, the NWSL off of uh, the Women's World Cup. Fantastic content from everybody at Gal Pal Sports and a great year to really get going. So I'm super excited and it's a great follow. And if they want to follow you specifically, Leslie, you're at Ryder Really on uh, cross platform as well, I believe. <laughs> cross platform indeed. At Ryder Really, as in Ryder Really? <laughs> <laughs> And Leslie is a great follow on social media. 100%. I, I can I can guarantee that. Um, so James, um, we are at FBT as Pod cross platform. Never heard of it. We, uh, you know, the best way to get in touch with us, as always, is to go to Twitter.com specifically, FBTS Pod. If 280 characters just aren't enough, it should be. It really should be, but you can send us an email. Mm-hmm. That's an electronic snail mail, and you can do that by sending it to stomach at gmail.com. And James, I'm going to cut to the chase, Mike. Go to facebook.com <laughs> slash stomach. Just do it. We're Just already long it. on the episode. We're very long, but we're long for good reason because we talked with one of our favorite people in the entire world um, and talked about what many people call their favorite contest in the entire world. And it's hard for us to argue. I'm so happy that we were able to experience it. And I hope that it was the first of many. Yeah. Um, whether it's being on the stage or at, you know, sitting in the crowd, it, it's, it's an amazing event. Um, so big props and big shout outs to the eaters who performed and did great. But of course, all the people that put it on. And first and foremost, uh, Kristen and Corey Hayashi, who did had another fantastic year. Absolutely. So uh, we thank all you guys that were at now out in L.A. that made our trip so special. Leslie, especially you. And thank you so much, of course, for being on the show. We hope to see you again very, very soon. And, of course, we thank all the listeners and viewers for listening or watching to this episode of Fink Beats the Stomach. Good night, Leslie. Good night. Thanks, guys. Forgot about the Twitch. Did we do it? Did we do it?